In the place of prayer, you receive revelation. And when that revelation comes, you begin to do according to the precept that was shown you. That's what Jesus said. The miracles that you see me get is because I do what I see my father do. So in the place of prayer, he is receiving revelation for the work. He writes it down and he comes and do what was shows him to do. Faith without work is dead. Glory does not just happen. You prepare for glory. Say, so prepare me a habitation. When God anoints you, the anointing will lead you to preparation. Because without preparation, there will be no glorification. God has commissioned Apostle Claude Azangisa to spread the fire in presence of the Holy Spirit in the heart of every young person, making Christ the ultimate personality in their life. Get set for a world that will set your heart on fire for God and grant you dominion over the affairs of life. First of all, let the child of God lives in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, the last time I was speaking about the presence of God, in conjunction with the word and Moses in Exodus chapter 3 I'm going down to chapter 4 verse 20 and I made us understand that it was this presence of God that actually made it so unique because when Moses went to Egypt before he even went go to him he said Aaron is going to be the prophet for you but I have made you a God to fail. Praise the Lord. So what actually made Moses a God to fail? So by the time he went to Egypt, they were seeing Moses, the son of the former or ex-son of Pharaoh's daughter. But in the realm of the spirit, that was a God that was stand to fulfill. Because God said, I will make you a God. So that was a God that was taught to fail. Why did that happen? Simply because of the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. So whatsoever God had wanted to do, there was already his representative in Egypt. Hallelujah. So even in Exodus itself, God said, you know, Chapter 2, verse 25, the Bible says, if I'm not mistaken, God had the cry of the children of Israel in Egypt. And then he remembered. He remembered them. Some translations will say he had respect for them. He had regard. Amen. And they were in Egypt. Amen. They were in Egypt. And Moses was in Midian. And God came to Moses in Midian and said, I've heard the cry of my people, and I have come down to deliver them. And then God did not go to Egypt, but he came to Moses in Midian. But the problem was in Egypt. Hallelujah. So when he came in contact with Moses, he anointed him with his presence. And Moses went to Egypt with the consciousness and the presence of God is with him. And under normal circumstances, he should have been afraid because it was the same Pharaoh that he ran away from when he was a very strong man. The Bible says that he was schooled in all the ways and the wisdom of Egypt. And he was powerful in word and in action. Then in Exodus chapter 3, he told God that I'm a stammer. What made him stammer? There's a lot. And he wasn't lying. But this time around, he went to Egypt, clothed with the power and the presence of the living God. Now, the difference between Moses and us is that he had to contact power to go. But we live right there. Hallelujah. Listen, let me ask us this question. When you say, Oh Lord, let your power come down. Where is it coming from? We are in mind that the Holy Spirit is already here. The conveyor of the presence and the power of God. So when you say, Oh Lord, let your power come down. Where is it going to come from? Oh 
But we've been saying it all the time. It's a sign that we are not really conscious of the presence. This is one of my secrets in the place of prayer. It's not a coming down of the presence of God. I have never experienced it in my life. I have experienced the presence of God over and over. But I have never experienced the coming down of the presence of the living God because I live in the presence. So number one, key of cultivating the presence of the living God is for you to be aware that the presence of God is with you and in you. Hallelujah. The last time on Sunday I said the fact that whatsoever that is born of God overcomes the world. And I said I love the term whatsoever or the phrase whatsoever. Simply because the Bible says in Acts chapter 19 that should be verse 11 that God did special and unusual miracles by the hand of Apostle Paul. He says such that even handkerchiefs and aprons that were taken from the body of Apostle Paul from the Apostle Paul and just brought into contact with people who were sick and demon possessed with demons left. No prayer was done, no intercession was done, no praise, no worship, nothing. But as a result of contact of this handkerchief and apron, hallelujah, from the body of Apostle Paul, we know that Paul was anointed. Hallelujah. From somebody that was anointed and taken to somebody that is demon possessed. Anointing possessed and demon possessed. And the demons left. No prayer was done. What will happen if you that lives in the presence of God shows up? But before that happens, you have to know that you live in the presence of God. Even though there is what we call the manifested presence. But you live there. So you've got to cultivate it so that it becomes evident. So that it will not only bless you, but it will bless others. Hallelujah. Because this presence of God is what gives us the dominion over situations and circumstances. Now let's read this scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 20, verse 19, sorry. For what is our hope, Paul said, for what is our hope or joy or crown or crown of rejoicing? And not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. That is to say that even at the time that Jesus is coming, you people are still in the presence of the living God. That's where you live, irrespective of the fact that you might live in Pipeline or Canadian South or Old Joshua or New Joshua or Old Yindu. But you live, for the Bible says that in Him we live and move and have our being. As a matter of fact, I tell people that whenever I'm sleeping, I've never asked God for protection for the past 10 years. I have never done that. Listen, I said, let me use it. That you will waste time. Hallelujah. This is a valid asset, right? As a matter of fact, if I make this second drop it, I might say it's okay, it's okay, but it's not okay in his hands. <laughs> Mobile phone made by man, man synthesized. It doesn't need anything. It doesn't need anything to tell you that we are supposed to protect it. And yet, we all know how protective we are of our foes. You are so protective that when your phone is 60% and somebody is 20%, you won't want to remove this 20% so that you charge your phone. 60 versus 20. If us being evil in court, we know how to protect these things. 
What about our Heavenly Father? Whenever I want to sleep, I just go and sleep. Because it is not my prayer that is going to make God see that He needs to protect me. It is not my prayer that brought Jesus Christ into the world. It is not my prayer that brought the Holy Ghost into the world. It is not my prayer that brought faith into the world. It is not my prayer that brought about the manifestation and the power and the dominion of the kingdom of God into the world. It is not my prayer that will make God realize that he should protect you. So when I want to sleep, I would go and sleep. I don't say, oh God, please, as I'm sleeping, please, please, Father, in the name of Jesus, please protect me from Satan and this thing. In the past 10 years. Why? Because in Christ Jesus, I live and move and have my being. And for the past 10 years, I have never fallen sick. I have felt sick before. I have fallen, I mean, I felt, I felt. I felt sick. The last time I got sick was when Deacon Daniel got married. You remember one of them? You can't remember. That's 10 years ago. I was sick. I felt sick. But when I got up from that place, I said, it is finished. And indeed, it was finished. When I had a problem, I dealt with it with my words. As one that lives in the place. You know, my uncle was talking about, uh, you know, righteousness the last time. I learned how to establish righteousness from a very young age. Ten years ago, I was praying one afternoon. And then, you know, I was using mosquito coil. You know, this mosquito coil, they have this metallic stamp where you place your coil. You understand? Is it tanky muntagadi or something? So, I would pray one Afternoon also, afternoon. And then I didn't see the mistake. He stepped on it. And then it caught my feet. The mark is still there. Then I stopped. I said, I command every bleeding to stop. And they didn't stop. At another time, it was a Friday, I remember, I was plowing. You know, they were plowing. They were like, this boy, he does not stay. Every time, church, church, church. let's leave his portion for him. So I was plowing. This place I was plowing was actually full of broken bones. So I was plowing. And it was, you know, it was bare. So I was plowing. And then I stepped on one demonic sharp or two like this. Ay, 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 ay. The thing just knew how to have it. The water was just wet. Then I did like this. into the hole. And I spoke the hole. I said in the name of Jesus. I command the pain every tetanus to be tetanus away. Then I continued the plowing. I continued the plowing. And then after that, even when I came to the house of the parlor, it was still bleeding. I said I won't mind this. Bleed. In the evening, I wore my shoes and I went to church. That's how it continued. Some two months ago, three months, the same thing. One metal just cut my Listen, the Bible says in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Not just the fullness of joy. And it's something I've learned to cultivate over the years. Those are not easy. In the presence of God, he said, there is fullness of joy. Every Jordan before you in the presence of God gives way. Hallelujah. But you don't command the presence of God. Let the presence of God take control of your life. And you don't feel like the children of Israel, the elders, the Bible says in Apostle chapter 4, the Bible says that Israel actually went to war and they were defeated. At the time they went to war, the ark of God was not with them. So Israel came back, 4,000 people were actually killed at the initial war. And then they came, when they came, the elders of Israel were like, ha, this time around God has dealt with us. What is it? So when I saw that place, I was like, why is it that they knew that it was God that dealt with them? And they still want to go to war again. 
So when they came, the Israelites, the children of Israel, they said, this time around, let's go to Shiloh and collect the Ark of God. The Ark of God is not something you collect. The Ark of God is moved by divine instruction. The Ark is not under your submission and authority. As God instructs Moses, he instructs that the priest or the Levite and they move. The Levites on their own cannot just get up and move the Ark. They have to operate under divine instructions. So this time around, the elders, they came and said, the Ark of God is in Shiloh. You need to feed this Philistines. Let's go and collect it. They went and collected it. When they went and collected the Ark, more people were killed when they went to them. Hallelujah. When the Ark came into the camp, there was great rejoicing and the Bible said the Philistines had it and they were trembled for fear. They said, hey, this time around, we cannot escape because this God that has come amongst them, nobody escapes. Because if you've heard about what he did, I mean, what he did to other nations before, you cannot escape. But they said, you know what? If we perish, we perish. We are going to fight this people together with their ark. And they captured the ark. Was the presence of God not with the ark? The presence of God was there. And 30,000 people fell in the presence of the ark. But God was there. He folded his hand and was watching what was happening. When they captured the ark and went with it to Ashdod and put it in the house of Dagon, God showed up. The presence of God sometimes might not be this, you know, over spectacular. But it's there. Just try it and see. That was what happened. Dagon tried God. And God dealt with him twice. First of all, God told him that told them a lesson. They were like, don't worry. I believe when we are placing this act here, somebody must have mistakenly jammed this our God and he fell down. So they came the next day and they, they realized that, I mean, after he fallen the first time and they placed him back, the second time they came and they realized that this time around his head and hands and feet, everything was cut off. When, God, when the presence of God was dealing with their God, they didn't know. You know what God did? He closed them out of that one and was cutting his head. That's why I used to say, should God permit us head, we will cut off Satan's head. God knows that's why he's hiding Satan. We will have cut off Satan's head. And because he said, it's me. If God was to permit us, if we use God last, Set us up and the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Speak on my behalf. But let me tell you, don't joke with this presence of God. Everything about life is revolves in this presence. When the presence of God finally leaves the earth, the earth will dissolve and die. Everything, even unbelievers, they are living simply because of the presence of God. What the Bible says, when Adam was created, when Adam was created, God breathed into his nostrils and he became a living being. So he's living not because of biological blood, he's living as a result of the presence of the living God. That is why somebody could take blood and yet dies. They will take your blood, you are normal, you are this. You are... The person just dies because that breath has gone. So cultivate that presence. It is that presence that will. A head of fire around you against what the devil is releasing in these last days. It is that present. And it's not something we cultivate in fellowship. You cultivate it at home. Then when you come here, it's very easy. You won't be bothered that service is too long or service is this. Somebody that is in the presence of God at home for three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours, eight hours, you think two, three hours will move in here. He's even yearning for more. But if you don't cultivate the presence of the living God, you always expect things to be, you know, people to be doing things for you. Man, God, pray for me. Brother, pray for me. Remember me in prayer. You went to you remember people in your prayer life. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Be magnified, Father. In Jesus' mighty name.
Dear saints of God, we believe this message has been a blessing to your soul. Please to share your testimony with us. Contact us on plus 220 or 3064-155 or 3321-694. You can also send us an email at arcofchange1 at gmail.com or follow us on Facebook at Arc of Change. Arc of Change Ministry, changing lives, transforming nations. Come on, if you got resurrection power on the inside of you, you got to make a bigger noise than that, I think. God tells Moses, take these people and go here. And I love Moses' response in Exodus 33. He said, there's just no way we're going to go, God, unless your presence goes with us. He understood that in the presence of God is fullness of joy, is strength for the journey that God had just asked him to go on. And I realize sometimes in church it's, it's great to get under the shower of his presence, but, but I don't want to leave this place without his presence going with us. I need his presence Monday morning. I need his presence Tuesday on the 7585 freeway. And God responds and says, I will personally go with you. And our prayer this morning needs to be, God, let your presence so consume us that we walk in it daily. Not just on Sunday, not just enough to get through today, but the overflow of your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just lift our voices, lift our hands? And just tell them I need your presence, Lord. Yeah. Let's sing this out together this morning. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty in this world.
just speak that out today. Lord, we desire you. We desire your presence, Lord. We're not here just for a service or just to sing songs, God. We're here to seek your face, the living God, the one true living God. Come on, you're the desire of our hearts, oh Lord. Let's sing it together. All my days on earth I will away. The moment that I see you face to face. Cause nothing in this world will satisfy. But Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Let's lay it down and sing it. Come on. Nothing in this world will satisfy. But Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Since his heaven. Yeah. 